Sun and Star, Gospel Reggae AM dot com, ITV, Sun City Radio, Rude Like That Entertainment, Hallelujah, don't you miss it. Okay, we're gonna get straight into a special feature of Positive this morning. And you know, there, there, there is a big one in, in Jamaica right now. It's, it's been happening inside of um, a lot of the Caribbean islands. I, I don't know where it originated from, but people, this one is the... Let me see if I get it right now. Chikungunya. That is correct. All right. Chicken, uh, chikungunya. All right. You know what? Let me leave it because Jamaicans have a shortened terms. They call it what? Chick V. That's right. Chick V. So this morning we are here and... Um, Miss Lewis is going to tell us about it because, people, this one is serious. Believe me. Good morning, Miss Lewis. Good morning, Baker. Good morning to you, listeners. Thanks for having me on your program. All right. The chicken gonya thing that's happening, is it a disease? Yes. All it right. It's a disease caused by the chicken gonya virus. All right. What definitely is chicken gonya and how is it transmitted? All right. Um, let me start with where it comes from. Um, as you said, you're not aware, and probably most of our listeners are not aware that it actually originated, but it was first found in Tanzania, Tanzania, one of the African countries, and it is transmitted by the Aedes mosquito. Um, we have the Aedes aegypti here, and so we are concerned because we have the vector, the carrier for this virus. Now, when the infected mosquito bites an individual that individual it will take a little time for the disease to manifest itself it takes bet anywhere between one to twelve days and commonly between three to seven days before the symptoms appear and the illness is similar to dengue actually and sometimes can be confused with it so it usually consists of a fever a very high fever, usually over 100 point, 102 degrees Fahrenheit, and joint pains. Now, the big concern, why it is of, of such a great public health um, importance, is that this joint pain can be so severe that it can be disabling, in that persons you know, cannot manage, persons who are fit, up and about, suddenly after getting this illness if they have the severe form they can find that they have to have help in order to get the simple day-to-day -day things done so you know um you have that situation that will can develop and also there is a chronic a long-lasting form of the disease where persons can go on to have this severe joint pain and arthritis so arthritis when you also have not just the pain but the swelling in the, in the joints going on for years and so you know we are very concerned about that so those are the main symptoms the fever the joint pains but other common symptoms include rash they can have headaches back pain you know um, muscle aches so similar things to the dengue persons can have vomiting and loose stools as well so, but let me ask you though mm -hmm. I, I, is it is there a case that we can get rid of it well there is no specific treatment for the, the, the virus when a person gets infected. But what we do is what is called symptomatic treatment, where we deal with the symptoms. So if the person, when the person has a fever, we give um, fever med medicines to treat the fever. We give medicines to treat the joint pains and so on. So we give medications to treat the various symptoms while the body itself um, produces the antibodies to fight against the virus and that virus you know will usually come out of the person system so to speak after about a week of the illness so we give the treatment to help to deal the symptoms while the body fights off the virus but while we cannot specifically treat the infected individual what we can do is prevent and so a big part of our me uh, message is trying to prevent getting infected and prevent the, the breeding of mosquitoes all right now that people out there is listening this um mm -hmm. we we heard on the news that there is one case in mm -hmm. jamaica no yes but um how best can we minimize this because people listening and i know some people getting um sort of scared wow mm -hmm. based upon the information that you just wrote but how can we minimize this the best possible way okay 
first of all, I want to encourage our listeners not to panic, mm -hmm. but rather to be prepared. And uh, the preparation will involve two things, as I mentioned. Well, two, it comes under two umbrella things. One, preventing the breeding of mosquitoes. And so that is everybody's responsibility. We need to make sure that we examine our homes because what we need to understand is that the mosquitoes that carry this virus the ADs, they are called day biting mosquitoes they bite during the day they bite at night as well but it's not like other mosquitoes that tend to be um, more night biting but these mosquitoes bite during the day so you'll find that while you're at your um, workplaces while you're at school and so on if the ADs are around and if you happen to have infected ADs you know then there is the risk of transmission the good thing is um, because chikungunya is mainly is being found in other countries right now, it's not that it is circulating in Jamaica. It would have to come in through an infected individual, as happened mm -hmm. with that one case. Someone who visited a country where the virus is circulating got infected and came home with it. So we are now, as a nation, um, intensifying our vector control activities at what we call our ports of entries. So our airports, our seaports, we are checking to make sure that we eliminate the mosquito breeding. And we also encourage now persons around their homes because after person, persons just pass through the ports for a time, but then they are going somewhere to stay. So we are encouraging every Jamaican to examine your surroundings, look for those containers that are um, holding water, you know, and it can be some things that um, it, it's not necessarily from the garbage, but even receptacles such as the containers that we use to feed our pets from, that we could hold be, plants in. The vases, right? Exactly. So those need to be weekly um, washed and um, well, actually twice per week. We wash and, you know, change the water in our vase, wash the, the, the pets containers twice a week check to make sure that we properly store tires and so on so they do not collect rainwater to um, prevent so that we can prevent the breeding we need to make sure that we trim all the bush in our um in, 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 our, in our yards as well because what happens is that the adult mosquito tends to hide in these areas and so they basically a reservoir a resting place you know so. you know I, I i got that one i got that one real understanding for you because mm -hmm. somebody say you know what i said my chap he had enough from a chap he had mosquito would have kill me yes yes they, they love to hide mm. in the bush and so, on. so we want to keep it low so that as we do our various activities now and get rid of the adult population we don't find more coming out of these hiding places so we need to eliminate the hiding places so they we know that we tend to have a lot of water problems in portland so a lot of persons are storing water in drums and so on so we need to keep them properly covered if we're catching rain water we need to keep mesh over the um the, the drums mesh that is fine enough to prevent the mosquito from coming in and laying their eggs because that's how the breeding cycle goes the mosquito comes find water to lay the eggs the eggs eventually hatch produce the larvae and that goes to another stage before you get the adult mosquito that is flying around so the management that we will be doing with our through our vector team will address the adult stage and the other stages before the adults so we need to have the participation of the community members to make sure that all the areas around the home where water is collecting, we get make sure that they're either properly covered, properly emptied for um, garbage receptacles outside, make sure it is covered so it cannot collect rainwater before we throw tins and sony bore holes so that they will not collect water just in case the animals get to them and they get out. And then now, so that is the prevention of the development of the breeding sites, but also we need to prevent ourselves from getting bitten and so to do that, we encourage persons to use mosquito repellents, those containing um, this chemical that we commonly call DEET, right? So when you look through the ingredients, just look for that D-E-E-T. You can buy that mosquito re repellent. Wear um, long sleeve clothing. Um, I know times are hot, so probably in the evenings that can be done. But if you can get mesh to put at your doors and uh, windows, windows, that would be um, good. And to sleep under uh, mosquito nets. And this is what we um, promote, particularly if someone were to become infected. You know, we definitely, those, per those persons have to make sure they get, um, they, they prevent being bitten by mosquitoes. So basically, you're saying that, um, for the example, if I am being infected, mm -hmm. make sure that 
I don't get this mosquito bite for it to be transferred again. Exactly, exactly. Because that's how the cycle goes. There's someone to, for example, this person, they had visited a country where they clearly got bitten by an infected mosquito, so the mosquito transmitted um, the, the virus to them. So it takes about 10 days for the virus to multiply in the, the, the mosquito. So it's not that a person comes today to the country and immediately, you know, they, they, by the next day, someone will get infected. It takes a little time. And so it takes about 10 days for the, the virus to multiply in the mosquito. Then that mosquito bites um, someone. And then in that individual, it takes somewhere between 1 to 12 days for it to multiply in the person's body before the symptoms start. But usually it's between three to seven days before they begin to have the fever and the joint pains and swelling and so on. Dr. Lewis, we, 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 we heard so much. Thanks a lot. Let me see what's happening on the text line quickly. Okay, um, Vietnam Records is saying good information and also. But you know, one thing, one thing we wanna, we wanna add though, um, for people that just joining, they are just joining the show. Tell us about the symptoms again, because you have people listening and they hear about this, but you know they're, they're not fully aware. Just tell us about the symptoms and where can we go if we 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 we, we have that? Wow, I wonder if I, I catch it or not. I wonder. Okay, all right. So the symptoms again are fever, and that usually happens in most of the cases, um, somewhere between 71 to 100%. Joint pains as well. So those are the two main symptoms, high fever and joint pains. But persons can also have swelling of those um, same joints. They can have headaches, backaches, muscle pain, rash, and they can have some vomiting and um, some loose stools. But you can also have complications of the disease where it can cause inflammation around the brain. So persons who have really, really severe headaches, they need to present to the hospital. It can also cause inflammation around the heart. So I'm talking about the complicated forms now, which mm. is not common. So let me stress and hasten to say. Uh, the, 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 this mm. complicated form is mm. sounding to me like you have it for some time. Not necessarily talking about the um, mm. initial stage. So okay, in that okay. right first 10 days there are a few persons and let me stress that it's a few persons that tend to have the complicated um cases so if persons have severe headaches persons have severe pain in the eyes persons have um chest pain with shortness of breath these persons definitely need to seek attention at a hospital but for most cases and in fact i should mention to you that there is about a three to twenty eight percent of the cases who actually get bitten by the mosquitoes and are infected that will not have a sim have any symptom at all so there are those who will actually be having um the, the, the infection but no symptoms but thank god it's a small percentage so we still need to be on the alert and prevent ourselves from getting bitten by mosquitoes all right um do you do you have a, a an idea of um the list of caribbean islands that do have it because we saw it on the news the other day that um yeah places like haiti and so forth they have it yes and one thing though um during the world cup there was this thing out on the net that some people are scared you know what because it was sounding like because it's something that has to do with the tropics really everybody yes. had this fear that whosoever went to brazil would bring it back and all right N no brazil is not one of the countries that is circulating to this to, to what the information that we have at present mm -hmm. what brazil has is dengue right so, and remember i said that dengue has a similar um, chicken gunny has a similar presentation to dengue so persons coming back from brazil now who have a fever are most likely to have dengue but we know of other countries in the caribbean that and there are quite a, f um, a few so i'll just name some yeah, just, you can just right name. so we have uh, well uh, actually saint martin was the first island and you'd find that it was mainly the french caribbean islands that first um had the the, the virus so saint martin saint lucia saint vincent and the grenadines guadeloupe guyana also has and then the interesting thing to us now is that our neighbor haiti 
has had um, this virus circulating as well. So, you know, we, we have persons, we have those countries, but it's not just in the Caribbean. As, I remem as, a, as you remember, I said that it actually started on the African continent. So there are quite a number of African countries, you know, including South Africa, Malawi, um, Kenya, and so on. We have countries in Europe, Italy, and France that have had it, and uh, some Asian countries as well. We have Indonesia, India, China, you know, Myanmar, and so on. So, so it's, it's, by, it's, by the yes. way, let me ask you before we go, though. It, mm -hmm. It's been out there for how long now? How long, how long has this been around? Since 1952, it was first oh, diagnosed okay. in um, Tanzania. So and and you, you have an idea of, like, um, the, the death toll from this? Thanks for reminding me of that. The thing is, unlike dengue, it tends not to be lethal. The main, so in other words, it doesn't tend to cause deaths. If persons are dying, it's more from um, the underlying or other conditions that persons tend to have because this condition can, it, 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 it's the persons who have certain conditions, the chronic diseases, hypertension, diabetes are at greater risk of developing um, chicken gunya. Likewise, the elderly and babies are at greater risk. So it's those persons who, whose immune system are not so well or they have trouble with other diseases where the complications from the other diseases are, are, they are more likely to die. But from the chicken gunya itself, it doesn't usually cause deaths. But I want to hasten to say though that because of this, the Ministry of Health is on a heightened surveillance and so persons, I want to encourage persons in the Portland community to look out for members of the health team because we will now be heightening our vector control activity Activities in our principal townships, so Port Antonio, Buff Bay, Hope Bay, Manchineal. We'll be combing through to look for um, the breeding sites and to treat breeding sites. We'll be doing our public um, education, so we'll be coming to communities, we'll be um, involving schools. Well, schools are on break now, but we'll be engaging with the leadership so that the grounds of the schools are so managed that by the time the children report to school in September, they'll be reporting to safe grounds where there should be practically no breeding of the mosquito. We are also hoping to meet with our stakeholders on the 11th of August. So various agencies, um, including the parish council, the political representatives, um, the National Solid Waste Management Agency, and other agencies to make them, to educate them, and to um, engage them in a partnership to help to prevent the breeding of the mosquitoes and in order to prevent the spread of um, of, of, of this disease. So we are looking forward to the participation. I'm asking you know, the various agencies and communities, institutions to welcome our team members as we seek to go out to help to protect our health. Okay, Dr. Lewis, thanks a lot for coming through. And you know, we just want to say to people out there that I hope you listen very carefully and you understand what it is, what it is all about the chicken gonia disease well said. and um you know is there anything that you want to add finally well just to emphasize the point that the prevention of the transmission of chicken gonia is everybody's business we all need to make sure that we check our environment do all that we can to prevent the breeding of mosquitoes and also to prevent ourselves from being bitten and once we notice the symptoms you know, we need to, and especially what I should also emphasize at this time, again, I think I mentioned it before, that right now it is really the travelers that we are expecting it to, 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 to um, manifest in because we don't already have it circulating. It will now be being introduced. So we are particularly, so I want to say to any person who is traveling from another country, you may not be sure whether or not that country has had it, but if you recently co um, has come, you, if you have recently come into the island and you have a fever, report to a health facility and make sure you give the history of your recent travel so, so that we can know what to do. One, one of your places of attention is the port of injury, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Thanks a lot for coming through. And, you know, it's a feature of positive. And we always ask the question, what makes you positive? Oh, for me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I have to say that I'm positive for... A number of reasons the main one because the Lord is my Savior and he gives me strength and everything that I need to go through each day but I also have a very supportive family and a very supportive health team and at this time I want to say a big if I may good morning to the health team at the Portland Health Department and the Port Antony Hospital and also to my family. Miss Lewis you know I have to say a big thank you because
I asked you from the other day, but trust me, the work is on you like real yes. crazy. It, it you, you are been. so busy. And I, I, I said, if it's even for me to push the time a little further, starting it from way before so I can get you. And I just want to say thanks because I know that you're a busy person. And I know when you leave here, I don't, I don't know if you're going to eat lunch or anything. <laughs> I, I do try. I have to take care of myself so I can yeah. take care of others. Okay. But so, thank you too for yeah having man. me. I really so appreciate it. I just want to say special thanks and have a good day. Thank you very much and God bless you. So you heard it from...